Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to the PixelLab.net. This is Jordan Condell. Today I have a very cool tutorial and this one is on a plugin called Griebler. Now this is not a free plugin, but it does have a very low price tag for what it does and uh, it's very, very cool. So the thing about Griebler is there's not a ton of information out there about it. There's not any tutorials and uh, it's kind of hard to know exactly what it does. So I wanted to just open your eyes to this plugin and kind of walk you through it. And I think you're gonna get really excited about it like I was. So what is Griebler? Well, it's a plugin that basically, in a sentence, uh, it makes things look more complicated than they really are. So you're able to make things like this very, very simply. So let's go ahead and jump into Cinema 4D. And we'll start with a very simple cube to show you what Griebler can do. So it's uh, a plugin, it's under Griebler. And uh, just so you know, there's this PDF documentation here and uh, there's absolutely tons of information on this plugin. It's a very, very complicated, deep plugin uh, if you wanna get into the uh, minutia of it. But it's also very simple if you just wanna scratch the surface. So. Uh, and just so you know, also, it has an entire library manager where you can save Griebler's and make all kinds of custom presets, but uh, that's not for today. Right now, we're just going to show you the basic Griebler. So you open up a Griebler, and what you're going to need to do is put an object inside of it. And the second we do that, you'll notice that our cube gets a little bit more complex. And that is what Griebler essentially does, is it takes things that are very simple, and it makes it look like you spent a lot of time modeling them, right? So uh, let's go ahead and talk about the object first. And basically this is uh, built on subdivisions. So if we add subdivisions, we're gonna get a more complex shape, which is really cool, because already just with a few clicks, we get a shape that is uh, kind of complicated, right? And also, if we don't wanna add our subdivision here, it also inherits the subdivision of the object. So if we kick up the segments in our cube, we'll get the exact same thing, right? So that is in the object, and there are tons of other options in here, including uh, your random seed. Uh, and then once we get into the base, we have a whole bunch more options um, based on these little subdivision cubes, right? So what we can do is change the size of them, and that's really cool, because already you can see the potential in just doing this. Lots of cool stuff we can do, uh, basically extruding all of these things, and we can change our bevel and all that kind of stuff here. So what are these little things on the edge, right? There's tons of little objects. Those are called greebles, and those are just another way to add more complexity uh, to your scene. So they have a whole uh, tab here full of greeble information, right? There's tons of greeble stuff you can do. We have all these custom greebles, and if we don't like these objects, we can actually just go ahead and change the frequency at which it shows up. And uh, if we turn all the way down, they're gonna disappear completely, which is kind of cool. So we can have full control over these greebles and how they show up and how many of each one show up. And uh, really the point is just making this thing a little bit more complex. And we can change the sparsity of them so that we have less of them. Or what we can do is go to maximum greebles per polygon and kick that up and we'll get more of them. And then we can also change all the parameters like the offset from the cube itself. We could have these you know, kind of floating around, animating. Uh, we can change the height of the actual greebles themselves, the bevel, the length, we can rotate them. There's infinite ways to customize the greeble, and if that's not enough, you can actually make your own custom greebles to stick on there. And if we don't want any greebles, uh, we can just turn off generate greebles, and then we can go ahead and play with uh, just the, the stock shape, right, the base. Well, there's a whole bunch of other stuff I'm not gonna get into, but let me show you some cool things that you can do. First of all, let's turn these gruels back on um, and maybe turn the amount of them off a little bit. So if we go ahead and turn this off and go into our cube and let's uh, give it a little bit more subdivision and let's go ahead and hit C and make this editable. Now what we can do is go to our polygon mode and select one of these faces and let's turn this on and let's pull this out and see what happens. And you can see that we're able to generate some really cool effects, uh, really just by pushing one polygon face around. So then, you know, we can click on a different one and push it around, do some really, really cool stuff with it, right? So you're basically taking a very simple object and you're making it very complex. And obviously this is very good for sci-fi type stuff. And, uh, but definitely think of other ways to use it besides sci-fi because there are tons of uses for this. So you can see we're getting a really, really interesting shape. And uh, you know, that was with hardly any work at all. So that is one really cool way that you can use 
uh, Griebler. Another thing that you could do is think about making a video board with this. So let's say that we wanted to uh, project an image onto this guy, right? So we'll make sort of a nice video board here. And we'll project our image onto here. And let's go ahead and dump that into our Griebel. You can see that we're already getting some kind of crazy stuff. Let's actually let's actually start with a fresh Griebel. Go to plugins, Griebler, Griebler, dump our cube in there, and now we get kind of the default settings, right? Let's go into our cube and add a couple other segments into our cube. And uh, let's go into our Griebler and turn off the Griebels. And now we're getting kind of an interesting video board, right? So let's go to our object and kick up our subdivisions a little bit. And now we're getting something pretty cool, right? A very, very easy video board. Now, of course, if we make this uh, editable, let's make these three by three by three. And we'll go ahead and hit C to make it editable and go to our faces and select a few of these. And then we'll kind of pull these out. And now you can see we're getting this really interesting video board, right? And then we can go to our Griebel and play around with uh, the height of everything. Let's go ahead and turn down the subdivisions uh, by one and let's go ahead and hit render. And now you can see that we're getting a really, really interesting video board effect. And uh, it's kind of a complex geometry and we really didn't do that much work. So definitely grab the Griebler. Um, just so you know, I'm not making any profit off of this by recommending it. It's just a really cool plugin that I think uh, that you guys would like. And the great thing is he actually has a free 30-day uh, trial. So go ahead and grab that 30-day trial version, play around with it, and uh, I think you're going to be blown away. It's, it's definitely a fun plugin to play with. Uh, this is a quick way to kind of fool your audience into thinking you spend a lot of time modeling it. So definitely check it out, and uh, I hope that you have fun with that. Thanks, guys, for checking out thepixelab.net, and we will talk again next time. Bye, everybody.